the cove. This is a picture of the cove in Taiji, Japan. And to most it looks like a beautiful place to visit. I mean, who wouldn't want to visit this? It looks pretty nice though. But it, in this case, it is not. According to the Ocean Preservation Society, more than 20,000 dolphins and porpoises are slaughtered in Taiji, Japan, in coves just like the one previously, previously shown. This is the largest slaughter of this kind in the world, and most people are unaware of it. I have been researching about the cove for like a month now, working on this project, and today I'm going to address three things. First, I will discuss what the cove is. Second, I will discuss what captivity means for some of the lucky ones that live. And finally, I will discuss who Rico Berry is and what his involvement in the cove is. What happens at the cove? The dolphins and porpoises are rounded up by using a sound barrier that pushes them into the cove because it stresses them out so much that they have no other way to go but in. Before the slaughter begins, the bottlenose dolphins are pre-selected by trainers from all over, over the world for captivity. Once the trainers have left, the slaughter begins. According to the Sea Shepherd Dolphin Defense Campaign, the fishermen use a technique called pithing. Pithing is a technique that they take, the fishermen take a metal rod and shove it through the spinal cord of the dolphins and porpoises. And it usually paralyzes them or and leaves them unconscious. These are pictures of what the cove looks like during the slaughter and after the slaughter. As you can see, there's at least 15 to 20 dolphins right there that have been stabbed that are just waiting to be pulled out of the water. The pithing technique paralyzes the dolphins and leaves them to drown, usually in the blood of their own family members which to me is just horrible to think about. The slaughter of these dolphins, well, no, the slaughtered dolphins are then used for food mostly. Japan's population is unaware of this and because they've been labeled as whale meat, which is much more expensive, so people will buy it, buy it in Japan. This misla mislabeling can cause a lot a lot of problems because dolphin meat has a high level of mercury in it. And it was actually very surprising during my research because the majority of the people that support this dolphin slaughter actually have mercury poisoning and are slowly killing themselves. Even with the health risks, Japan's government is defending the hunt still by saying it's part of their culture. How can it be part of their culture if the majority of Japan's population is unaware of this? If it's part of their culture, why do they have to mislabel the meat just to get people to buy it? There are a lot of interviews online that you can find that show Japan citizens' reactions to learning that they have been eating dolphin meat all this time. And so they are just, they, they, they're shocked by it. Now I'll discuss what captivity means for these dolphins that aren't killed in the cove. Trainers pre-select bottlenose dolphins and have them shipped to a life in captivity. They prefer the bottlenose dolphins because it all goes back to the original dolphins that were put into captivity for TV series such as Flipper. The captive dolphin industry is the driving economic force behind the slaughter in Taiji, Japan. In just the U.S., dolphinariums represent an $8.4 billion industry. The dolphins that are chosen for captivity are sold for upwards of $200,000, while a dead dolphin usually only brings in five to $600 for the fishermen. These dolphins are likely to be the ones you see in swim with dolphin programs, and in the shows at SeaWorld. Not only are these dolphins treated like circus sex, but they are also destined for a life of various health problems. According to SOS Dolphins, captivity has a ver variety of effects on dolphins, including 
ulcers, neurosis, vomiting, respiratory diseases, depression, aggression, stress, and many more. The main thing that captivity does to these dolphins is it reduces their life expectancy greatly. Now that I have discussed the cove and captivity, I'm going to tell you who Rick O'Berry is and what his involvement is in the cove. Rick is the campaign director of Save Japan Dolphins, but he was not always fighting for the dolphins. He has worked with dolphins for the majority of his life. He spent 10 years in the dolphin captivity industry and the next 38 fighting against it. In the 1960s, Rick was responsible for capturing and training the dolphins that appeared in the TV series Flipper. After one of the famed dolphins died in his arms, which is pictured below, that is Kathy, the original flipper. Um, he realized captivity was not healthy for dolphins and he knew he had to rededicate himself. And not only did she just die in his arms, he described it as suicide because she came up, swam into his arms, took one last breath, and then just floated to the bottom of the tank. Rick also founded the Dolphin Project on the first Earth Day in 1970. This organization is aimed to free dolphins and to educate people about dolphin captivity. Rick believes this campaign will expose the truth about dolphin shows and get people not to support them. In 2003, Rick not only learned about the slaughter in Taiji for the first time, but he also witnessed it for the first time. And then he spent the next five years documenting everything he could about the slaughter, from videos to interviewing the people that live in Taiji, the fishermen, and it was crazy to see how violent some of the townspeople got. They get up in your face and they just yell at you. He has no idea what they're saying, but they just get in your face they, and like they're all holding cameras because they're trying to provoke you to hit them and so that way they can get you arrested for assault but usually they're pretty cool about it and it's like just it's like unbelievable just the things that these people do just to be able to slaughter all of these creatures every year. In 2009 he pulled a team together to create a documentary titled The Cove. The documentary shines light on what happens in the cove and spreads this information to the world. Rico Berry continues to work to stop the slaughter and to end captivity, but he knows that as the killings decline, the amount of dolphins in captivity will increase. But he would rather them alive than dead. After discussing the Cove captivity and Rick O'Berry, I hope it is easy, easy to see that this should not be overlooked. With this year's season already underway, which I actually took this screenshot yesterday, and it started in September, at the beginning of September, and there's still, well now, 158 days left in the hunting season. I hope you see that there are many ways to get involved, and like there are many ways to get involved with this um, program and everything, from the petitions that you can sign, which I've signed actually three petitions now, and I've donated at least $800 now to this cause, and there's like so many fun ways to get involved like from all like the wristbands and stuff which the wristbands are a little expensive I didn't really want to spend thirty dollars on the wristband even though the donations went to this but so now I'll let you see that there is so many things that you can do to help this cause what will you do to help 